right, we're going to move on. Um, I'd like to welcome Luke Trill. He is the UK Director of More in Common. Hello to you, Luke. Um, Hi. You've got new research out today about what people in the UK think of democracy. What did you find? We do. Well, uh, as we all know, our democracy has had a lot on its plate uh, in the past five years with Brexit, the pandemic, uh, shortages, lockdowns. And so we wanted to find how well it was holding up with all of that. And there's good news. Uh, Britons <laughs> remain strongly committed to our democracy. Nine in ten say that democracy is the best way to run the country. Uh, Two thirds think that Britain is a genuine open democracy. But there was bad news too, and that's because the way our democracy is working in practice is leaving a lot of people feeling let down. Okay. It's really striking that 84% of the people that responded to our survey said that they thought that politicians looked down on them, uh, and significant majorities also agreed that there was one rule for politicians, one rule for everyone else. And there's also a growing feeling that we've got from our focus group discussions that People think that the democratic system's rigged against them, that it doesn't deliver for them. It's not making a positive change in their lives. So optimism about democratic principles and pride in our democratic heritage, but a really worrying trend of disillusionment in how it's working out in practice. I mean, how do views on democracy in the UK compare with other Western countries? So the good news is that we have that strong commitment to uh, democracy, which you don't necessarily see everywhere around the world. For instance, we looked at attitudes in France, in Germany and the US. And when you look at France, actually, people are much more likely to consider non-democratic alternatives than in the UK. In the US, they're more likely to think that democracy is rigged against them and it's not a genuine democracy. But what's really striking is that compared to our European partners, people in the UK are more likely to say that politicians themselves look down on them as ordinary members of the public. And that, that's a really worrying disconnect because it creates the space for populist authoritarians to come in and say, we will deliver the will of the people. And as we saw in January the 6th in the US, when you reach that sort of critical mass who feel left behind, who feel politics isn't working, you can have quite uh, violent and extreme consequences. So we hope that this is a wake-up call to politicians to say, our democracy is in okay shape, people are committed <laughs> to the principles, but if that disengagement continues, if that distrust continues, there could be quite worrying consequences further down the line. All right, well, let's talk to our politicians first about that. Do you agree with that critique, Andrew? I think it's absolutely fascinating, isn't it? I, I mean, someone once said that democracy is the worst system apart from all the others. And uh, I think it's good to hear that the research suggests that there's approval of democracy. I think, I think in a free society, politicians are always looked down on to some extent by the public. And they're held to account. And uh, it's very important that we have a rugged, cynical, cacophonous media to hold politicians to account. Um, so, so I'm disappointed to hear that that uh, people think that politicians look down on them. I think that we are all of us the servants of our constituents, and if that is the result of your research, then we must look at ways of addressing that. I do think that um, you know populism has clearly been rampant around the world recently. We we live in an age where the international system is under great pressure. Narrow nationalism and populism is on the march, and I regret that very much. Um, and I also think that in Britain, we are continuing to move towards a more presidential system. And we have, in British democracy, worked on the basis that the prime minister is the first among equals. And I think that uh, we need structures and mechanisms which put more power back All into right. Parliament and ha uh, make the premiership less presidential. And I hope that there's quite a lot of us in Parliament who are worried about that. Okay. And I hope it's going to be an agenda that's going to emerge over the next year or so. Kim, do you agree with the, uh, the critique from Luke? I think it's a brilliant piece of research and, and well done to everybody more in common for doing it. Yeah, I mean, this is one of the reasons I chose to put this out forward to, to, to enter politics, because I think there's so much that needs to be done around engaging people with, with politics nationally and locally. I feel really passionate about the issue of political literacy. I mean, I still today talking to young people about what, what democracy is and how it operates where decisions are made, and, and we don't know enough about that, I think. I mean, it, it amazed me during the, the by-election, we had a 47% turnout, and apparently that's really good. 
But what concerns me is what are those 53% of people, why are they not coming out and voting? Why do they not feel that politics matters enough to them to go out and, and put their, their mark um, on the ballot paper? So I think there's a really big piece of work to be done around political literacy, political engagement, um, getting people mm. into politics from different backgrounds, again, which is one of the reasons I put myself forward, you know, and, and, and just that disconnect between con constituencies and communities like mine in Batley and Spen and, and the corridors of power. So I think research like this is really important, but I think the thing is now is what do we do with it and what responsibility have we got as politicians to make sure that people do understand how important it is to their lives. And, and part of that is our responsibility to how we behave and how we interact with people. You know, I'm spending all my time at the minute, every minute going out and speaking to people on the ground, whether it's people working in schools or the NHS or, yeah. or, or local businesses. We've got to have that piece of engagement there to, to help people understand how important it is to their lives. All right, Luke, you're nodding away. Just a brief response from you and then uh, I'll open it up. No, I mean, I think Kim's hit the nail on the head. And one of the things which we say as a way forward in this report is really improving schools' role in things like citizenship, education, making sure that young people know that sometimes people will have different views from them and it's important to consider them, engage with them and respect them. Because actually the poll found that Gen Z, uh, which is those who are aged under 25, were the most likely to think that people who disagreed with them were wrong on the facts rather than just having a different opinion. So we think there's a really important role for schools, as Kim said, in educating young people about the importance of appreciating others' points of view and taking part in democracy as well. Right, but one of the other responsibilities is, of course, during things like elections and by-elections. And Kim, you received some awful abuse during your by-election campaign. But Labour were also criticised uh, for using leaflets showing Boris Johnson with the Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi and the phrase, don't risk a Tory MP who is not on your side. Modi is a Hindu nationalist and that was seen by some as an attempt to get Muslim voters on side. Is that sort of divisive tactic really helpful in terms of engaging the public? I think we do have to look at how we campaign. And I mean, on that particular incident, um, you know, we were looking at this from a humanitarian perspective. But I think you're right about the broader point about how we campaign and how we conduct ourselves du during the by-election. And because I was subjected to such horrible abuse and, and nastiness, it's really difficult to not get drawn into that yourself. And, and I tried my best personally uh, and through the party campaign to rise above that. But it is difficult when other people are, uh, you know, going low. We, we do need to try and go high. And that's what we certainly try to do. And right. um, I don't think that's helpful. And it just disengages people. Francis? I'd, I'd talk about some bread and butter issues. For me personally, I worry about um, uh, requirements for voter ID, making it more difficult for people, especially if they're not in safe housing, to vote. I, th I think that's something to guard against. But I also think we need to talk about trust and honesty and integrity, because I think that does matter in politics. And I suspect there is a lot of cynicism at the moment about some of those contracts that went along the VIP um, track uh, during the COVID crisis. A lot of people were stepping up in the COVID crisis to do our best for each other and other people were making a hell of a lot of money. And I think people feel resentful about that. And we need that public inquiry to establish the truth of the matter. Um, Emma, what's your response? You're an advocate for free speech. Should political debate be dialed down in general? Well, I, I think uh, these findings are all very fascinating. But um, at the, the, the one thing that I really picked out of this as most concerning to me was those statistics around Generation Z suggesting um, as we see quite often in public debate, the assumption that your opponent is just simply factually wrong or sometimes, you know, demonising your opponent, assuming that they are bad people because they don't share your views. Um, and the Free Speech Union do an incredible amount of work advocating for civil discussion in the sense of um, advocating for people to be able to express their views freely and openly without fear. And I think that's really important. And some of the recommendations that I saw from um, this study, uh, it focusing on education, but also focusing on um, the conduct of MPs in the sense of, I, I personally, I think that it would be uh, good for people to try and demonstrate the sort of society that we would like to become. And so being respectful of other people's views, not trying to silence our opponents, not straw manning them and instead steel manning them and behaving with good faith and trying not to enter into these sort of mudslinging um, oh. matches 
Uh, so I think that actually what I've taken away from this um, is that, you know, my, my fears have been confirmed in some respects, but it's only uh, made me uh, more sort of bolstered in, in, in my belief that it's really important for us to continue advocating for free speech.